All right, so the question has come up. Is tolerance stacking an issue with um, assembling and putting together your own firearms? I don't think it has to be, and please stay tuned and let me explain to you why. So the scenario is my friend reached out to me and he wanted some advice or, you know, my, my point of view or maybe point them in the right direction for getting an aftermarket slide for a Glock. Something similar to this. This is a Glock 17 frame that I picked up, bare bones frame, and I wanted to get a red dot mounted. And instead of getting an OEM Glock, um, which I'm perfectly happy with just stock Glocks shooting those, I, I love those, minus the sights, I, I get that. Um, but I didn't want to go through the hassle of buying the Glock, and then sending off the slide to get it milled with the red dot. So I found what I believe to be kind of a cost-effective way to get around that, and that was to find um, not so Gucci of a slide that's already cut and coated, ready to go, that has a good reputation, and you know that, that's gonna fill the need of what I'm looking for, and that was to mount a red dot, a Trigicon. So I went with the Grey Ghost Precision slide, um, and I went with the Grey Ghost Precision barrel. Um, the difference between the barrel and uh, OEM Glock barrel was very little, so I just went ahead and got this one instead. Um, so for this gun, I don't have anything else outside of the slide and the barrel and the Trigicon that is uh, not from Glock. Minus the uh, magazine release, but that's a different story and it's only been on here for a little while and it's something that I won in a shooting thing, so I'm just giving it a try. Um, but that's very recent. But I've been running this Glock kind of the way it is for almost two years now. Um, it's one that I shoot more often. Um, it's kind of my range deal. So this is, a potential point for tolerance stacking. But I didn't ever worry about that because I know I'm only mixing two brands. One being Glock, which everybody makes their standard two, right? And then Grey Ghost. So I'm really only adding one opportunity for there to be tolerance stacking. So in my opinion, that's how I'm not even gonna worry about it. Um, same deal with the SIG. This is my new gun that I'm using a lot lately. Um, this is an M17 right out this right off the store shelf. All I done to make this the way it is is put on this Icarus Precision um, frame uh, grip module. Excuse me, and that's it. I mean, this gun. The reason I went with the loophole instead of the Trigicon, I do prefer Trigicon, but this thing is made to receive the loophole. That's why I went with it. One more thing I'm doing to mitigate. Um, any potential for tolerance stacking. And then let me be clear, tolerance stacking is not something that I'm really worried about. Have I seen lots of issues with people coming across these super expensive, super Gucci guns and them not working and them getting, these people getting super frustrated because they've spent so much money and, you know, all sorts of hours on whatever groups researching this, that, trying to build the perfect thing and they're out on the range and their gun doesn't work. Um, and I believe that's a scenario where you've just over-engineered a, a, a basic build. You know what I mean? I mean, what is, I, my opinion, you do what you want, but what is this thing not gonna do? You know what I mean? I get it, you can have a smoother trigger, uh, less goopy than a basic Glock trigger, right? A crisper reset. I get all that. Um, I don't feel that, I'm gonna to gain too much from that. Uh, so I don't wanna invest the money. I don't wanna invest the potential to have issues. I don't wanna invest anything. I'm just gonna learn how to run this thing the way it is. Um, I'm not saying don't do it. And I'm not saying if you do add a different trigger, you're gonna have tolerance stacking issues. I don't believe so. Um, I don't think this only holds true for pistols. I do think if you're doing an AR-15 um, build, the potential is much less compared to maybe some other firearms. And that's because of the 
military standard, you know, the mil spec thing. So, you know, companies have kind of like a blueprint to go off of and they're all trying to match one uh, specification. Same with the AR-10, kind of. There's some different uh, stencils, I, I, I guess you could say. Different stencils you can go after. But I applied the same logic of keeping it real simple to my AR-10 um, build here, which is an aero precision, pretty basic stuff, you know. Um, the handguard stayed the same. The upper and lower stayed the same. I mean, from aero, the internal parts, the pins, all the little stuff, it's all from aero. You just, you know, I just stick with one brand except for things that I was looking for to have separate. I've got a Geisley trigger in here. I've got a separate muzzle brake. Changing out a muzzle brake is not going to change anything for tolerance stacking, you know? So it, I, I think you can stack tolerances, but it depends with what you're upgrading, right? So where you're putting those tolerances. As far as anything else goes, it's pretty much just an arrow gun except for a few key features. And that's the whole mentality that I try to follow is I'm going to try to stick to one brand because I absolutely do not want issues. Um, I'm not saying there will be issues um, when you intermix brands, but I do believe that the possibility is there. So this was the advice I gave my buddy. Um, you know, it's kind of like go after one style, figure out what you're looking for, go for that and go after that. So none of this, uh, can be an issue if you're not out there shooting anyhow. So if you're just building to build, you know, these crazy Instagram guns and you want to take a picture of it and put it away in the safe, then do it however you want. But for me, I want a hundred percent reliability as much as I can get. And I don't want to compromise that by any means because I shoot my guns and I shoot my guns a lot. It's what I like to do. It's my hobby. Um, you know, it's, it's what I do. So I hope that helps somebody out. I hope that maybe gives you a different uh, perspective on tolerance stacking, whether it's an issue for you or not. So that's something you're gonna have to figure out for yourself. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for all the good comments and feedback. It really helps me direct the channel in which way to go. Um, and all the thumbs up and subscriptions, those are really cool too. So thank you guys, stay tuned for more stuff.